Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again for another episode of Farming Simulator 2022. And yes, we are back in our harvester. Uh, we're still going to be using the top liner uh, for a little while longer, at least. Uh, we still, oh, we are still in the month of July. And basically, there are no other sales. And I can't really afford a new harvester, although it is tempting. Now, speaking of temptation, okay, so we have, this is one of our fields here, and it is a wheat field that is ready to harvest. Uh, we'll do a little running here. We don't own this field, not yet anyways. It is canola ready to harvest. And we own this field. This is a canola field, and I love canola. Why? Because money. Yes, we've been over that. Money makes the world go round. So let's oop, hop back in here. There we go. So if we come into our contracts, field 47 is actually up for harvesting. So I think we're going to accept that contract because why not? We'll make a little extra money uh, from it. And we're just going to primarily, at least starting off by focusing on getting our, oh, that's closed. Let's open it up. Hmm. There we go. So we will harvest this canola as well because we'll make a little extra money uh, from it. But since we're harvesting the canola in our field anyways, Otherwise, I'm not sure I would have grabbed this one. It's tempting we could have bought the land too. But if we're lucky, actually one thing I didn't check, where do they want this uh, delivered? So if we come back up here, please be our... Oh yeah, <sighs> wants to take it to a competitor. Well, ain't that just fine and dandy. Um, I did kind of forget the fact that there are multiple productions for the canola, but that's fine. We will take it to a competitor just enough to fulfill the contract. Uh, and then we'll take the rest to our plant because we could definitely use more canola. So maybe we should have looked to buy this field, but we didn't. I wouldn't mind getting this field as well. Man, there's just so much when you want to grow. There's so much you want to do. It's obviously, this is a great field. It is right next to our farm, as you can see peeking behind the trees there. Be nice and handy. It's not too big, and I don't think I would combine it with our wheat field. Because I do like having that track to get to our other big fields there. Oop. And doing the Elm Creek Drift, that is a thing, as you can see. Uh, I get a little distracted, and you go a little off. So, as we've been chatting about, we are looking to get our oil mill production fully functional. We have uh, we added some canola last episode, because we harvested our front two fields. So that will hopefully, uh, well, that will give us some good money. But I'm really hoping that field will keep our production going. And we do have our sunflower field, which we will have to look to see when that is ready to harvest. But for now, we're just going to finish harvesting field 47.
We are just wrapping up things here on Field 47. And we looks like we have just enough room in our hopper here. Uh, so that, well, we have to empty this anyways, because uh, we're not driving this to Johnson's uh, market. Uh, that would take just a hot minute to get done. So get this, we'll get it unloaded, and we'll get this over to Johnson's Farmer's Market. With that done, we'll get that tractor going over to the market here momentarily. But what we're going to do is we are going to do a lap around the headland here uh, before we set this off on a worker so we can get to doing some other chores around the uh, farmland here, including getting that canola delivered because money. And, you know, uh, we'd like to fulfill our commitments. Whoa, 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 sir. Hello. Gee, yeah, come on, man. Rude. So looking good. Now, obviously, much larger field here as we work away on things. Handsome looking dude there. Yep. Oh, uh, whoa, and we nearly experienced the full Elm Creek Drift. I gotta be careful. Uh, yep, yeah, that's just the way things are here. Got a little too fast and loose on the controllers here, and, uh, yeah, we just slide just a little. Just drift. Just, just a little. Now, the important reason why to do the headland, especially on a field like this, is... The field goes pretty close to that tree line and, you know, the creek that we occasionally drive into. Uh, so pretty sure the AI worker will have a bit of a challenge with that. Uh, especially since we have our beehive down there. That's not going to help things. But you can see, pretty tight fit along here. So hopefully by doing one pass along the headland. We should be fine to give them plenty of room. If not, we can come back and do a little touch up. But hopefully we won't need to do that. And that beehive should have really helped improve the yield. Oop, Elm Creek Drift. That was the, uh, yeah, no, that was, that was totally on me. Uh, that the beehive hopefully has increased the production of this field. We don't have a comparison point, but that's fine. We'll take the, uh, you know, in theory, we've made uh, a bigger, better harvest thanks to those bees on the canola. Now, because of that, we will probably keep canola going in this field. Um, now, the big question, you know, actually be interesting, and I don't know the answer to this. If anyone does is, does, do our beehives help other farmers' fields? Now, I doubt it, but that would be interesting, uh, whether the bees from our main farm area or this one can help the canola field we just harvested. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually possible. I doubt it. But if you know, uh, either way, please let me know in the comments below. But I'm hoping this large field is going to help sustain our oil mill production, uh, you know, well, as well as the two front fields. But as we discussed last episode, I really, I have some back of the napkin ideas for those front fields and obviously take them away from being a productive field uh, will mean we have less uh, crops such as canola. So getting additional fields to keep our oil mill production going and flowing will be very important. As you can see, with one lap around the headland, we are at 40%. And that small field basically uh, almost filled it up. So let's get this on a worker and let's get uh, that over to the farmer's market. A little unfortunate that uh, this contract calls for this to be delivered at our competitor, but that's fine. We're not greedy. Okay, we're not too greedy. Um, 
Yes. Hmm. I, I wish I wish there was a way to influence where we could sell this, but uh, no, not today, folks. So one nice thing is with the contract mod that I have, we can see how much canola we actually need to deliver, which as soon as we pull up here, we'll pull up. But it is 7,500 liters, so that will allow us to kind of keep our finger on the trigger. No, clutch, uh, handle, lever, lever. Let's go with lever. Doesn't sound as cool, but uh, in terms of when to stop, because we do want to keep as much of this canola as we can. So if we come in here, we have the ability to turn the details off and on. And as you can see, we need to deliver 7,500 liters to fulfill this uh, contract. So let's uh, get this going here. And we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Oh, speaking of eye of it, we're going to have to get back to the farm. Our harvester is already uh, nearly full. Oh, and there we go. So we made $65 of extra income. We have 728 liters left, which we won't sell. That's going to our oil mill production. But let's get back and let's get that harvester empty. Well, I'd like to say we're rolling up just on time, but the harvester is full. Uh, but that's fine. We will get a load here. Now, oh, we did not go and drop off any of the extra canola from our contract, which while this is going on, let's go in and accept the contract because money, or I should say collect. There we go. It's a little extra contract income, a little extra canola. Now, probably in hindsight, and we shouldn't do this, but we have the time. We come in and look at the price uh, for this farmland. Yeah, we probably should have bought this field and just taken the canola right over. Oh, so he's got, are you empty? Yeah, no, he's just taking the extra canola. So let's have a look, see what else, uh, what other trouble we can get up to. So we're getting up into just a tad bit of trouble here. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a new harvester and a new field, both of which we do not own. Yes, we took on another uh, contract. We're going to collect some wheat here, which uh, we'll probably end up selling this wheat, uh, the extra wheat, although we'll probably put in the silo for now. We'll, we'll figure that out later. But besides the money, uh, which, you know, we've been over, I, I enjoy the money, but I took this contract, which is actually a very good contract. You can see $8,000 and we should make a good, pretty profit. But I wanted to try this harvester, this John Deere here. The T560i, great brand, no idea, not a farmer. But this one is one of the harvesters I'm actually considering upgrading to. Uh, so I did want to give it a try. As you can see, it's got the same speed as our top liner, but pretty confident this header is much, much bigger than the one that we have. So we'll see, but I think this is, you know, strong contender and hey, it looks pretty good. I like the look of it. If I was a farmer and just buying based on looks, you know, this John Deere looks pretty sick. Very, very slick. Not sick, it's slick. So as you can see, we have the other equipment we borrowed another tractor and another trailer. Now we will get our harvester down here, I think as well, simply to help with this. Once we're finished with the canola, which will be pretty nice to see two harvesters on a single field at the same time. 
So loving it. Looks good, my man. So this is one of those funky fields. But we will come along the headland here. Oh my goodness, and we're already half full. And speaking of full, uh, our harvester is full. So instead of doing the headland, which I was about to do, let's set this off on a worker. And we can now take care of unloading our harvester. Now, as you can see, as we roll up to take the rest of what's in our harvester, hopefully, since we're at 51%, we can take it all. If not, we will likely grab our other trailer that's on our farm. But we're so close to finishing this off. And then we can get our harvester over to the field and help and take care of field... 69, giggity, uh, hopefully fairly quickly, no pun intended, uh, we're almost done, it's looking good, so this should give our oil mill production a very good start, well hopefully not start, we've already started, but basically enough to keep it going a full season, And there we go. They're empty. Perfect. So let's get our harvester over to help out with the contract work. Now we have our harvester over at the field, so this will get done a little faster. But we're now going to have to hop over and get, well, Better lined up here as well, so we don't have to come back and get the edge. But the contract harvester is full, so let's now set up a basic, I guess probably a time lapse. We'll see how this goes of us running around, emptying, uh, filling, and emptying the trailers. Hopefully we'll be able to top up things here. Now, which one is which? Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that didn't work out uh, as according to plan. He drove right by, and I do need to go to the contract worker because he's a bee's a full. Now, the good news is we only need to deliver the wheat to that facility right there. So it is not a long haul. And of course, the worker we just went by is now 80% full. But that's fine. We'll get this uh, taken care of. Now, as you've noticed, I have sent uh, our tractor and trailer uh, on a worker to come over here to help with the loading and unloading of all this beautiful, beautiful wheat. So we'll just hop in here. In fact, I wonder if he's just arrived. No, he's probably just in a car accident. That's all. Worker B, it's okay, man. Work okay, Worker B, not a pun at all. But guaranteed, probably in an accident, which we'll go check out um, in a moment as soon as we can get uh, this back over to the feed and mill south here. There we go. Off we go, so off they go. And we'll be unloading this momentarily. This is the first load we'll be uh, dropping off here. And love this trailer, fairly large. We'll have a quick comparison there in a moment with our trailer. But 22,500 liters, 
you know, with that extra height, that certainly helps. Man, this, this does feel a little weird coming in from this direction, though. I don't think we've done that before. But we can get this delivered. And you can see it actually unloads pretty darn quick. I like it. I like it a lot. But not the primary thing we are needing to buy at this point. But something to keep in mind. Ooh. And we're going to have to hurry back. Uh, things are getting filled up fast and furious here. So looks can be a little deceiving. So this is our trailer, as you can tell, a little, little worn. But it has just over 10,000 liters. It's 55%. So it is smaller than the one that we're using as part of the contract. But it is definitely no slouch. We'll see this fill up here in a moment. I think 15,000. So I think it's 18,500 liters. Now, if that's the case, it's, you know, 4,000 liters. Yeah, so it'd be worthwhile perhaps to get a larger trailer. Because, you know, less trips, although so far, you know, this hasn't really been the limiting factor in terms of how long certain things take. It's usually the harvest. Now, this harvest is going pretty quick because we have two harvesters down on the go, which is a great trick. You know, if uh, you want to take on contract work uh, and you have your harvester. Now, if it's a really small field, like we did one there not too long ago where literally it was done so fast you probably could barely have time to uh, set up the second harvester but in larger fields so if you have your harvester and then you borrow the equipment as part of the contract you can get a field harvest done pretty quick and if you recall not too long ago we were i was thinking about that when we we're doing harvesting i think it was a lot of wheat or maybe it was some barley and it was taking a long time with our harvester and the I accepted all the contracts, didn't borrow any equipment, and I kind of regretted that. And I thought about taking one more contract to borrow a harvester, but they were no bigger than my current ones, so decided against it. But even then, that in itself might have been worthwhile to get through just a tad faster for nothing that uh, is too expensive. I don't know, is it just me or is does my trailer here just take a little while longer to unload? Maybe not. And, you know, it could just be one of those things now that I'm thinking about it. It's like, did that take longer? Doesn't matter much. Let's just uh, quickly bang out uh, this contract. Now that we are just finishing things up here, we've almost got this done. We've got one little bit to do over there. 
So let's go grab it. Or grab it, I guess, harvest it. Pull the boom arm in. Yeah, this was technically my fault. Uh, even though I'm going to blame it on the field shape. But I thought I was lined up when I set my harvester off on the initial worker. That's fine. We'll get this a little bit. We got it emptied. We got it over the cell point. And we can go from there. Now, hopefully the fact that, you know, because this is the contracted harvester, having the straw enabled doesn't hurt me. We'll find out. Normally the game sets things to what it needs to be. Hmm. Which I don't think this contract requires me to collect straw. I didn't really look. I'm like, yeah, accept it. Let's play with the John Deere. Huh. I'll have a look here in a moment, so we'll see. My, my harvester did pretty good. You can see, for the most part, what mine did by uh, this texture here versus the straw enabled. That was the last of it. We are now completely done harvesting. So let's have a look at the contract. Come in here. Yeah, just harvest the wheat. That's good. We need to deliver uh, just over eight. Oh, uh, terrible math there. Sorry, Don. Uh, just under 11,000 liters. So I guess 10,000. 100 liters. So this should be enough. And we should have about 3,000 liters to go. Or I should say left over from this uh, trailer load. And then 22,500 liters can go into our silos. So that's the nice thing about the big contracts. If the math holds, and hopefully it does, this will be a nice little boon here as well. And giving us much more feed than uh, the other contract that we uh, took for the chickens, which I want to say was barley. Oh, dear, oh dear, you materialized. I guess you got teleported via the Enterprise, not sure. You know, I really should buy a power washer. You know, something to think about as we look to redo the front yards. But we just need to be careful here. So we will try to stop this, I think, with about 4,000 liters. So we can keep the maximum amount of wheat here possible. As it just spills right out. Oh no, okay. So we're gonna have to deliver all that. So if we come back in. That is weird. I was pretty confident that said 10,900 liters to go. That is definitely uh, weird. So, okay. So we'll send our tractor back to the farm. And let's pull in with the other one. All right. Uh, this is it. Uh, we need to make this work. Uh, <laughs> well, let's get this dumped. So, and actually, I do really, really think this empties faster. Okay, you're just eating up all my profits. There we go. So 7,162 liters left over. We sold a little. Not too bad. Hey, it's it's okay. 
So let's look at a few things before we get this back to our farm. The first thing we're going to look at are the two harvesters head to head. Yes, header to header. And as you can see here, our top liner, uh, yeah, it's a little, little smaller. Uh, so the header on this is six meters versus 7.6 meters. So that 1.6 extra meters, you know, will definitely help harvest our fields faster. Uh, the other big difference is the fact that our harvester, the current top liner, the one at the bottom, 8,500 liter capacity versus 10,000 liters. So yes, definitely an improvement. Let's have a look at the pricing here. As you can see, now this came with us when we started the game. It was part of our farm equipment, 129,500. Uh, and more than double the price, the T560. So $285,000. So definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, even though this one is slower, I do believe when we're harvesting, they are at the same speed. So, you know, something to keep in mind. So we will have to figure out whether we will upgrade to this John Deere, but not today, uh, not today. The next thing we're going to have a look at are the, well, I guess it's the production, not R. We only have one. So if we come in. Production, production, where are you going? Here you go. 22,186 liters, and we are already starting to produce canola. So, you know, I really think we're going to have to look at potentially even buying some more fields of either canola or sunflowers. But we will have sunflowers coming up, but that is a separate production in addition to the canola. So something we'll definitely have to look at. Now we have two things to do before we wrap up today's episode. And the first and most important uh, is, well, if we don't do it in this order, uh, there's only one thing left, but we want two things left. So the first thing left is take this wheat, 7,162 liters, and we're gonna put that in our silo because this isn't our equipment. And as you'll see momentarily, when we do the second thing, which I'm sure you can guess it, is accepting the contract. It's right, collecting on the contract. This will disappear. So let's come in. Uh, and you can see we have completed this field 69 and we'll collect on it. And yeah, we are out of that beautiful uh, tractor. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching. If you did enjoy today's episode, please hit the like button and we will see you next time. Bye for now.